racers took on Autodrome Show of the Year and put on the short track show of the year. Local NASCAR star Alex LeBay and NASCAR next standout Caden Lapsovich dueled on the high banks of the quarter mile. Locals called the Little Bristol of Quebec for the final 30 laps. Each shared the lead numerous times, battling back and forth. In the end, LeBay savored the confetti shower in his first NASCAR victory. We are 60 kilometers south of Quebec City in the picturesque town of Valley Junction, Quebec, home of Autodrome Chaudière. Welcome to the third race of the NASCAR Pinty Series in 2017 as we get set for the CRS Express 300. Welcome everyone to NASCAR Racing on TSN. I'm your host Dave Bradley. Alongside me is the trackside voice of NASCAR Racing in Canada, Adam Ross. And Adam, this racetrack really is a hidden gem. Dave, carved out of the hills of Quebec, on the way to Vermont, this little quarter mile is a true racer's racetrack. There's two great lanes of racing available to provide some serious entertainment like we witnessed last season. And there is a good look at Alex LeBay, the man who showed the way here last year. Lapsovich and LeBay, they locked horns for about 30 solid laps here at Autodrome Chaudière. In the end, it was the Can-Am Ford who was victorious in what was a back and forth historic battle in the Pinty Series. The young phenom from Victoriaville, just 40 miles southeast of here, won again last week at Delaware Speedway as well. And that win, Dave, put him in second place in the points, just three points behind Kevin Lacroix from St. Eustache, Quebec. And Lacroix was no slouch at Delaware, leading the most laps in his new Dodge. Crew Chief Don Thompson Jr. had that number 74 turning through the corners at Delaware. But here today, the Lacroix tuning group were struggling in practice and qualifying. There is a good look at our points leader as he'll line up in the 11th position here today. And there is another driver who calls Autodrome Chaudière home. Donald Teach captured today's E3 pole award in a time of 13.181 seconds for his second NASCAR pole, Dave. Now you've got a track that's fast, quick, and racy. You really can't ask for a better recipe for good old short track racing. And to get the CRS Express 300 underway, let's set it down trackside to Carol and Mark from CRS. Gentlemen, are you ready? Start your engine! It's almost a full house here at Autodrome Chaudière, and they are ready to watch a very, very good race. The third race of the year in the NASCAR Pinty Series. Dave, in practice and then again in qualifying, this field was so tightly bunched in times. I don't know what to expect today, but we're going to have some great views. The 04 of JF Dumoulin running the new Spectra Premium NSR 100 radiator, as is LP Dumoulin and Alex Tagliani, specifically built and designed by Spectra for these NASCAR cars. And Spectra Premium is having a lot of fun. They've got representatives pretty much at every one of our races, Dave. Now let's take a look at the WeatherTech starting grid as the cars roll off. Donald Teague on pole, Alex LeBay alongside of him in row number one. Row two has Kate Lapsovich and DJ Kennington in the 17. Rounding out the top five, starting on the inside of row three will be LP Dumoulin, and on the outside, the Mopar number 27 of Andrew Ranger. To the fourth row, that's where we've got Alex Tagliani and Mark Dilley on the outside. Looking back to row number five, there is JF Dumoulin in the 0-4. Adam Martin inside the top 10 in the number nine. Kevin Lacroix all the way back at 11th in the 74, and Simone Sion Vienne in the 25, making his first start this year. And rounding out the field, making his return behind the wheel, John Fletcher in the 28 and Larry Jackson in the 8 machine. So the field now just trying to warm up their tires behind the Dodge Ram Rebel Pace Truck. There's another good look at the 0-4 of JF Dumoulin. Struggled a little bit at Delaware, his first oval start of 2017, but he's looking for big things here on the short track. Well, here's a look at Adam Martin, a Jostin's Rookie of the Year contender. He should do well here, as should his teammate Mark Dilley. Believe this, Dave, drove overnight from Sauble Beach, Ontario, to Quebec City, which is where this racetrack is located, just to compete here this afternoon. These race car drivers are dedicated as we take a look at the E3 Spark Plugs race analysis. 300 laps, Adam, and a quarter mile banked oval. And it's going to be 300 action-packed laps. You are always busy behind the wheel at this racetrack. 
Saw a good look at the Castrol sponsored number 25 of Simone Zion Vienne. Do we ride along board your points leader, the 74 of Kevin Lacroix? Look at how close the front row is getting. Normand Joubert is waving the green flag, and we're underway here at Valley Junction, Quebec. Side by side, still in the turn number three. Neither driver giving an inch. The two drivers with the most laps here at Chaudière, side by side in the early going. Alex LeBay, fresh off a late model start just the other day, so he has laps under his belt already. He's ready to go for more here today, and they're leaning on each other in the early going. Donald Teague rubs tires with the 32. And how about DJ Kennington in that casual edge 17? A good qualifying effort, but fourth place, the outside of the second row, is one of the hardest spots you can start from on an oval track. The important sub-story that we're watching all season long, and this one goes with it as the 32 of Alex Leve did lead a lap, so he picks up those bonus points, which all count at the end of the year. They were separated in qualifying by six one thousandths of a second. That's about what they're separated at the line on that first lap. Donald Teach really had a good run going at Delaware in his first oval start. It just didn't last very long. Unfortunately, he ran into trouble early going. Little bit of a different tone from that Mopar M1 spec engine. Andrew Ames are the only driver to run that. You know what's pretty cool about that engine? Yeah, it's a Hemi. Absolutely. And we just heard a little bit of spotter. Those guys are going to be so busy this afternoon because these drivers are going to want to be cleared as quickly as possible. Look at Caden Lasovich working the inside in a battle for fourth. Andrew Ranger, though, has chosen to run the outside group. He's not running that traditional line. There, inside clear. I was going to say that is traditionally the Andrew Ranger line. He gets that Mopar Dodge up on the outside, and he's quite happy to run out there. But Caden Lapsovich getting a little impatient, and he wants by the number 27. And now a battle for the lead. DJ Kennington to the inside. Contact with Donald Teach. Slight contact with Teach. Kennington gets to the inside. Heartbreaking down into turn number three, but Kennington really getting around the ends well. Boy, this is going to pick up the confidence level in the Castrol Edge Dodge team. DJ Kennington has been so long without a win, and he has struggled in past years here in the series. He's had a few good finishes, but he needs more. And you know, he's running now in the NASCAR Monster Energy Cup Series. A couple of starts, one at Daytona. He's going to try and make another start in the summer race at Daytona, but he needs a good run in the Pinty Series where he's battling for the championship. I was watching Donald teach. He raced hard on the outside, but as soon as the opportunity opened to get down to the bottom groove, he took it. Well, it is a sunny, warm day here in Valley Jones, Yon, Quebec at Autodrome Chaudière. There's a good look at your total lubricants bumper to bumper number 74. That's Kevin Lacroix, your points leader, coming into this one. Currently running just inside of the, or just outside of the top 10 in 11th position where he started this race. And there's Simone Ziovien in his first start of 2017. A good looking cast roll number 25 for Dion Vien. And now we ride on board with Kevin Lacroix. A couple of different views today. This car was turning so well. We set it off the top of the show. It was turning dead. Delaware through the middle of the corner so much better than anybody else until unfortunately made contact in the pits with Andrew Ranger. Uh, bent some parts in the front end and it just didn't pick up after that pit stop for Kevin Lacroix. He still managed to come home with a pretty solid finish, but he's looking for big things here today. Lakovich again looking to the inside of Andrew Ranger, and we've got a different procedure for today's race. Delaware Speedway had a live pit road, so the crews and drivers decided when to come down for fuel and tires. This will be a halftime break race, so at the midway point of the race, they'll go into the pits, take on fuel and tires, and they'll come back out in the same order in which they went in, Dave. Lapsovich with only one start as we take a look back. A battle for sixth spot between the 0-2 of Mark Dilly, the Avenue Auto Parts Ford Fusion, the WeatherTech.ca number 47 of LP Dumoulin. Dumoulin digging on the inside. Uh, <laughs> 
was Susan Mix, and I screwed up because I said these guys when I said yeah. spotters, we cannot forget Susan Mix, one of the veteran spotters up in the stand for Mark Dilley. front window of the Johnsonville Ford Fusion rookie contender Adam Martin chasing that duo as everybody chases a 17 at Kennington. The third race of the 2017 NASCAR Pinty schedule from Valley Junction, Quebec is brought to you by Mopar. We built it. We know it. And by Pinty's, making great food fun. And our leader when we went to break was DJ Kennington, but both Teed and LaBay have both powered past the St. Thomas, Ontario racers, shuffling them all the way back to third spot. Yeah, DJ looks like he's just a hair off of these drivers, but I don't think it's any reason for concern. As we mentioned, there's a halfway break. He knows he could take the lead early. We're going to have a look at what just happened to put DJ Kennington back out of the lead. Now, you remember DJ roughed up Donald Teague to take the lead, but this time he just pulls up to the outside. He knows those cars are better than him. He lets them go by on the inside. I think what you meant to say was DJ executed a perfect short track pass <laughs> by giving just enough bumper to move Teach, but not enough to take him out. Really just to open the hole as uh, Keaton Lapsovich takes advantage of a car that may not be handling all the best, the 17 Castro Edge Dodge of DJ Kennington, the 76 of Keaton Lapsovich now up into the third spot. And Kennington, the warrior of the NASCAR Pinty Series with 124 consecutive Pinty Series starts. He is now the driver with the most starts in the NASCAR Series in Canada. And how about 79 top five finishes to go with those 124 starts? A couple of championships along the way. He knows how to get it done. Always been a front runner. Uh, as soon as NASCAR took over the former CASCAR Series here in Canada, DJ Kennington was always a threat to win A races and B championships. And he's still in the mix here in 2017. Don't count that driver out. And there's a car out of the same shop, the Mopar number 27 of Andrew Ranger just tucked in behind. And watch the line. He stays up the hill, but so smooth on the throttle. When you run the bottom, you're hard on the brakes, and then you're more aggressively on the throttle. When you run the outside, it's a much smoother transition, so you can save tires and save brakes up there. You see another car up on the outside battling with the eight of Larry Jackson. That's the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. Dumoulin just ahead in the Spectra Premium 04. That's a battle for 11th position on the racetrack. And Dumoulin is a lap down, so he is not battling for position in this trio of race cars, but keeping the car in one piece and running steady. Kevin Lacroix really struggling right now with the handle on that 74. But Adam Martin in the Johnsonville Ford Fusion putting some pressure on the Lowe's EpiPen. St. Cyber number 18 of Alex Tagliani and Mark Dilly and the Leland 02 just ahead there as well. We're riding on board the Johnsonville Ford of Adam Martin, and this battle has been ongoing. The challenge here at Show Gier, you can get to the inside of a driver fairly easily, but you cannot put the power down, and that's what Tag's doing every lap. He can get to the corner of Mark Dilly, but he can't step on the throttle to make a move. That's the progressive banking in these corners here at Autodrome Show Gier. It's a battle for seventh on the racetrack. As we take a look back up front, Donald Teague in the 22 and the 32 of Alex LeBay. Interesting, we should circle Alex LeBay because he's the only active driver here today to have won a NASCAR PT Series race here at Autodrome Show Gier. Of course, Jason Hathaway, the other driver with a checkered flag. And this is the first race in the history of the series that Hathaway has not been with us. It's a little disappointing to see that team not here, but... It is kind of weird, but he did say he was retiring at the end of 2016, and he kept his word, at least through the winter. We got a couple more races out of him at the start of this year, and you never know when we'll see them back at the track. Battle between a couple of Dodge challengers, the 17 of Kennington, the 27 of Andrew Ranger. And you can see on the ticker across the top of your screen, the 28 of John Fletcher. Good to see him back in the series as well. Veteran of the super late model ranks in Ontario has been a crew chief. There you see him just back, the orange number, the black car. He's uh, been a crew chief most recently in the NASCAR Pinty Series, back behind the wheel here today. And he stayed on the lead lap for an awfully 
really long time. The car looks decent for him. Looking at LP Dumoulin in the WeatherTech 47. Watch the left front, or we lose it there in that view, but all these cars running so close in times with very different setups. And the leader's now deep into lap traffic as your points leader. And the bumper-to-bumper -bumper dodge. Kevin Lacroix goes one lap down. The driver who comes into this one second in points about to pass him there as well. So you can tell the cars that are performing as well now as they were in the early going. They're up a group trying to get it to stick and hoping to get to that halfway break where they can make some changes. Well, it is so hard to pin these cars to the bottom of the racetrack, lap after lap after lap, as T goes to the inside of J.F. Dumoulin. J.F. currently running in 10th position in the Spectra Premium 04. You see some contact back there between Larry Jackson and the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. Lapsovich going through on the inside. Now he'll be clear. He'll be able to duck down onto the inside once again. It's important to be a crew chief and have that dialogue with your driver. Settle them down. It's okay. There's a lot of time left in this race. With the halftime break, there's a little bit of pressure off of these teams because they don't have to perform and worry about getting passed on pit road. So they can really fine-tune these race cars, pick some adjustments they might want to focus on, whether it be air pressure adjustments, things of that nature, change some wedge. And Don Thompson Jr. is a veteran. Lapsovich into the back. Of uh, J.F. Dumoulin is Dumoulin got all kinds of crossways off turn four that time. Now Lapsman jumps up to the outside. I think they're bumping and banging still. Well, it's close quarters racing, Dave. Hard to stay off the cars around you as we look at Alex Tagliani in the EpiPen Lowe's 18 and Adam Martin in the Johnsonville number nine. He just pulled up to the outside lane and drove by. battling for the Johnsons of the Rookie of the Year battle, and he's chasing his teammate, Mark Dilley, who got totally crossways off of turn four. Dilley up in the outside groove continues to wiggle. Let's see how long we sit. Look at the left front of Dilley and maybe The 22 is a great example. Their front end stays planted. Look at the fender on the left front. It stays low to the ground. That's the style of setup they run. Same with the 32 of LeBay. What I've noticed, the nine of Adam Martin and the 02 of Dilley, a lot of chassis movement on those race cars. You saw one of the crew chiefs, that was Scott Steckley, looking on as his driver, Donald T, from Bois-Catel, Quebec, leads the CRS Express 300 right here on TSN. Welcome back to the third round of the NASCAR Pinty Series on TSN. The CRS Express 300 so far has gone caution-free as 50-year-old Donald Teach racing for Scott Steckley's organization has led twice for a grand total of 100 laps. Looking so good out there on the racetrack. And here comes the battle we watched last season with so much enthusiasm. It's the race for second, though, right now between Alex LeBay and Caden Lapsovich. LeBay really loose in the corner. And I don't think there was any contact between Lapsovich and LeBay. I think LeBay just overcooked it going through the turn, and that allowed the 76 to get to the inside. Wow, Lapsovich slides up the racetrack, couldn't quite hold it down, gets a little under acceleration, but he wants to make that pass and make it stick, and he's going to do it. you got to think Alex LeBay in his helmet is looking over, and he'll see the nose of that red car thinking, you again? Didn't we do this last year? Well, I have a feeling he better get used to it, because that's the young rising talent, Caden Lasovich and Alex LeBay, and they are both gifted behind the wheel. So Lasovich goes up to second. There's a good look at the 47 of LP Dumoulin. Currently running in sixth position, battling with the 17 of DJ Kennington for fifth. We saw from the other view as well, DJ just drive away from Dumoulin. Then we went on board with Dumoulin. You see why DJ drives away going off the corner, because Dumoulin's all sorts of busy with the steering wheel and the throttle. So LP can get in into the corner well and through the corner well, but coming off is where DJ has the advantage. And Lapsovich pulling away from the 32 of LeBay. We have to think we're 131 laps into this 300-lap race already. At this point, those Goodyear Eagles are going to be screaming. We got a problem. 0-2 of Mark Dilley is off the pace. Yeah, he slowed down right in front of the leader, now in front of Caden Lapsovich, who's running second. And you can smell a little bit of rear end grease. That rear end is what took him out at Delaware Speedway, so I'm not sure that's him with the problem, but somebody out here is cooking the rear end gears. And it seems every time that 0-2 has a decent run going, 
some bad luck just jumps up and nips him. And it looks like that might be the case in the Ford Fusion as he continues to run around the track, albeit a little bit slower than the pace he was setting earlier. Disappointing for Mark Kelly, but he'll persevere. If there's a way to keep it going, he will keep it going. And again, he is on the racetrack because of the no active pit lane here at Auto Grove Show here. And there you heard it. Smell like a gear? He's asking his uh, spotter, what does it look like? A lot of communication because the spotter still has to do their job while well, Mark's talking to Jeff and Jeff is talking back. The pit crews are way off the end of turn three and four here at Show Deer, where Dave, we're right in the middle. So Jeff Walt might not be able to smell that a rear end gear is, is cooking on the racetrack where it blows right by us every lap. And so he asked Mark Dilley, what does it smell like inside the car? You remember at Delaware, it filled the entire driver's compartment with smoke. He knew exactly what was wrong. We ride on board with the 76 of Caden Lapsovich. Lapsovich continues to work lap traffic. The Spectra Premium 04 ducks to the inside. Currently two laps down. He's in 11th or 12th position, I should say, is JF Dumoulin. And you'll notice at this point of the race, just prior to the halfway break, there's not a lot of difference between the fast cars and the slow cars. So a pass that took a corner earlier. Oh, and there's Dilly. Smoke out the back end of the Ligetland 02. And so whatever it was, finally gave up the ghost in the Avenue Auto Parts. Leland Ford Fusion, Mark Dilly slows to the top of Autodrome Chaudière. Still a green flag right now as he looks for the pits and he's going to head there. Well, and we're getting word over the NASCAR radio. The break will come once everyone completes the 154th lap, Dave. And so that is in one lap time. So everybody starting to check up here as they will hold their position once the caution flag flies. 154 laps in the books, and there is a smoking 0-2 of Mark Dilley. Not a lot of urgency in that pit. And no, there is not a lot at all as uh, the field is under yellow. What they'll do is they'll determine the free pass car, which I believe will be Adam Martin in the Johnsonville number nine, get him to the tail of the field and then bring the entire field to pit road. And this will give everybody an opportunity for four tires, fuel, and adjustments. There will be no hurry, so the pit crews will have a little bit of time to make the adjustments they need. Donald Teague has been the class of the field so far. Welcome back to the CRS Express 300. Pit stops are complete. One driver out of today's race, the pilot of the 02 machine. That's Mark Dilley. Mark, uh, tough long day, even a tough way to get here, and then uh, race cut short. Would you burn up a rear end? Yeah, it looks like another rear end one. And it, uh, I could smell it about lap 30, and it just was getting worse. The car actually felt pretty good. It just, I was waiting for the stop, but it just, I could feel it starting to tighten up, tighten up, tighten up, and then finally it just let go. And remember, Mark only does the oval track races in the NASCAR PT series, so we won't see him again on track until Saskatoon. 1747, row behind you. Try and get you down here. 17 going to have 18 with him, so I'm sure that hole will fill pretty quick. All right, here we go. Pitch right away. Ready. And green flag, green flag. And there's Steven Simmons telling Andrew Razor what's all around him, what's ahead of you, what's behind you. Look at them rubbing already. Donald Teague in the 22. Kate Lapsovich in the 76. Everybody has what they get. They've made their adjustments. You lie in the bed that you've made now. And Donald Teague nosing ahead past the 76 of Caden Lapsovich. But look at this. We're side by side, three rows deep. And they're still in pace lap formation. Just accelerated a little bit. Teague doing a nice job keeping his car on the bottom. If he wants to push the issue, he'll just let it slide up into the second group. And now Lapsovich on the outside. He gets his foot in it a little bit earlier, and he noses into the lead that time past the stripe, and now he'll be able to get out in front of the 22 of Donald Teague. He got position, Dave. Once he gets to where he can put that number 76 on his driver's door, right into the right front of Teague and pin him down to the inside, now the outside lane has control. On board the WeatherTech.ca number 47 of LP Dumoulin. You see he's not wailing on that steering wheel quite as much as he was in the early going. The 
This is as racy as I've seen LP Dumoulin on an oval track, definitely all this season, but in quite a while. He's looking, looking like he's elbows up today, Dave, ready for action. Dave Lapsovich, about a two-car length lead over the circuit Acura, number 22 of Donald Teague, holds down second. Now the Can-Am Kappa, number 32 of Alex LeBay, takes home third spot all by himself as he puts the Mopar Dodge, the 27 of Andrew Ranger, down to fourth, and LP Dumoulin in the 47 and the 17 of DJ Kennington still battling for that fifth spot. And LP had to bite the brakes a little bit last time out of turn two because Ranger slid up the racetrack. That allowed DJ Kennington to get the advantage again in that spot on the inside. This is the fastest we've seen the 18 of Tagliani so far this afternoon. And barely a mark on that 18 car. Tagliani having a good run so far, feeling things out. Lots of race still to go. You know, you talked about the 47 of LP Dumoulin being as racy as we've seen him on an oval track, at least so far this year. His average finish here at Autodrome Chaudière in three starts is eighth spot. He comes into this one fourth in points, so he could use a very good position, but he's struggled here in the past. He really has, and you know, we said it was impressive. DJ Kennington going back to Daytona as we've got a faster position. LaVey working on second spot. So Kennington going to Daytona to run the Super Speedway. How about Alex Tagliani? He's going to China next weekend. That is pretty cool to run an endurance car race in China. So a tight bullring here in Valley Junction, Quebec, just outside of Quebec City. Pops on a plane, goes to China, and back behind the wheel. But when you're a race car driver, you chase those races. You go where the action is, and LeBay clears Donald Teague, is now in second position. Quick ride on board, the 32 of Alex LeBay. You see how calm and collected he is behind the wheel of that car? I've, I've never seen Alex LeBay get wound up, even appear to get wound up behind the wheel. Sooner or later, it's bound to happen, but it's not happened yet, Dave. There he is, a good look at your current race leader. He's got some breathing room behind him. Caden Lapsovich in front. TSN from Autodrome Chaudière, Caden Lapsovich from Grimsby, Ontario, the youngest champion in NASCAR Pinty's Series history after winning the championship in 2016, continues to lead after starting in the third spot earlier this afternoon. But, you know, there has been one person we haven't talked about so far here in 2017 because he is dearly missed from the racetrack. That's uh, Peter Cadieux, who's been involved in cascar he's been involved in nascar since its inception and uh, deciding to take a step back in 2017. yeah peter was at canadian tire motorsport park so was rose so was robin uh Katia, the whole family was there and yeah we, we do miss peter every week yeah uh, smiling and of course the last couple of years was the driver of the pace car in the nascar pinty series a good look at second or third spot that's the 22 of donald teach and you can see how well that car is working. So you talked about the nose and how well it sits down going into the corner. Teague seems to have found his swing once again. Now we look at DJ Kennington in the fourth position in the Castrol Edge Dodge. A little bit of rubbing up both sides of that 17 machine. He's been in the midst of the action this afternoon. It's funny, now that the traffic sort of gets spread out on the racetrack, you see a battle for fifth spot between LP Dumoulin and Alex Tagliani. You can see the drivers and, and how smooth they need to be here around a tight third of a mile oval here in Valley Junction, Quebec. But this really plays into the hands of somebody who may have cut their racing teeth on a road course, building rhythm, getting smooth through those turns and keeping up the momentum. And caution is out. Don't see any problem on the racetrack, so likely some debris. NASCAR probably spotting that. They called for the caution, according to our stats people up in the tower. So we'll get that cleaned up. We'll take a quick break here on TSN. Caden Lapsovich continues at front. 
You know, the people here in Valley Junction, Quebec, love their NASCAR racing, and they came out in droves. A great crowd here at Autodrome Chaudière. I'm Dave Bradley, along with Adam Ross and Larry Jackson, the recipient of the free pass during that last caution. We have nine cars remaining on the lead lap. 77 laps remain when they restart this race. Just like last season, Lapsovich in the 76, LeBay in the 32, battling for the lead. Caution bunches everybody up, and look at LeBay up on the outside. Jumps into the lead, so that outside groove almost looks better than the inside groove now. Well, and remember, LeBay, this is his home track. It looked like he was leading at the strike when they took the restart. Lapsovich did pass him going into the corner, so he gave it back, so they're calling it a clean start. There's the 47 and the 18. LP Dumoulin and Alex Tagliani been battling just like that for the last dozen or so laps and pretty clean so far they haven't really rubbed despite being very very close on occasion here goes Lapsovich to the inside LeBay is up half a lane off the bottom and Lapsovich to the inside he's going to outbreak the 32 down low and Lapsovich to the lead at the line what a move by Caden Lapsovich to the inside that inside line is where Alex LeBay lives here. He hits the mark going in through the middle and coming off. Deeper in the field, you can see the nine of Adam Martin and the 27 of Andrew Ranger. And the 74, your points leader coming into this race, struggling, or his struggles continue. He's two laps down currently. So tell them, clear at the bottom, clear at the bottom. I'm surprised Andrew doesn't come back say, I don't want to be on the bottom. I'll just stay up here, thanks. <laughs> He's trying to work the bottom. He makes a little contact with the Johnsonville number nine of Adam Martin. Ford Fusion and Dodge Challenger battling nose to tail now. Well, and Adam Martin looks comfortable up there. Whatever changes they made to LaCroix 74, it is much faster in this second half, but still mired a couple laps down. Yeah, now he just needs the luck of the flags to fall. Whoa, three wide. Jackson on the inside. Adam Martin, the big loser there. He's going to slide back. Wow, and there was some contact there. That could hurt Adam Martin. So far, he looks fine as we ride along with Larry Jackson in the laps for MD number eight. Good luck in a battle for third spot. The 22 of Donald Teague, the Castro Ledge Dodge of DJ Kennington, out the back bumper of the Dodge Challenger of Kennington. These two have been getting a little bit touchy feeling the last couple of laps. We saw them make slight contact there on corner exit. Oh, big contact there. Well, Donald Teague, a veteran late model driver here in Quebec, he has many laps here at Autodrome Chaudière. He knows how to get around, and Martin. Looks like big trouble on board the nine. He has cut a tire. He is heading for pit road. You can see the left rear squatted right down on that nine machine. Oh, that's heartbreak for the Johnson, or the Johnston's Rookie of the Year competitor. Have another look. We're on board with last division. Oh, my goodness. Heavy contact between the race leader and Adam Martin. Adam was checking up on the backstretch to go to the pits. Lapsovich with nose damage. The body were crumpled on the front of the 76. As Teague and the 17 of Kennington continue. There, clear inside. Still a battle for third spot. Now you can see the 47 of LP Dublin, the 18 of Alex Dagliani. I managed to catch these two. And that's Donnie Reinhardt telling DJ Kennington he's got a car on the inside. It's Kennington up the racetrack. That could give TG advantage he needs. And Kennington looked like he wanted to get back to the inside, but Dumoulin drove it up the inside, got the spot. Let's see if Kennington can fight him back. Whatever changes Billy Burns, the crew chief on the WeatherTech.ca 847 of LP Dumoulin made during that halftime break, he, I was going to say it worked very well as Dumoulin oh. goes for looping into the ditch. There's not an adjustment you can make to allow a car to work when you're getting hit in the left rear corner like that. Caution is out for this spin by LP Dumoulin. And Dumoulin stayed on the lead lap. That was huge. He was able to get the car backed up, get ahead of Caden Laps, which we did not lose a lap. How did he get out of that ditch? Let's have another look at what happened. I don't think he thought the 18 was there. Well, because the 18 shouldn't have been. Three wide at Chaudière is, is not... 
It's not the wise gamble. <laughs> Into the pits goes the 27 of Andrew Ranger. You can see changes being made to the Mopar Dodge, but your leader continues to be a little bit bashed up, Keaton Lapsovich. start of the afternoon here in Valley Junction, Quebec. 17-year-old Caden Lapsovich leads and is elected to run the inside lane for this restart. Alex LeBay in the Canon number 32 up on the outside. He's done well there. Well, once again, LeBay leads the way at the stripe. By rule, I believe he's got to allow Lapsovich to get back around in front of the 32 machine this lap, or he could get his wrist slapped by NASCAR. He didn't do that time because he led at the line. And he leads into one and two. Lapsovich still on the inside. Now, historically, it takes a few laps for that 76 to sort of build steam, get chugging on the inside. Lapsovich generally picks up steam a little bit later going of a run. And race director Trevor Handley over the radio says clean start, guys. So every restart, they will say clean start or starts under review. We get another clean start. Good restart for the 17 of DJ Kennington as well, up into third spot. Teague in fourth, Alex Tagliani runs out the top five as we take a look back to a battle for eighth position between the 27 of Andrew Ranger and the eight of Larry Jackson. One of the interesting things here with Larry Jackson, that eight machine is Keaton Lassiter again, drives to the inside of Alex LeBay and takes the lead. See a few laps and he picks up steam and then he sets sail. The eight machine that Larry Jackson is driving was the car raced by Armani Williams at Delaware. And Larry's doing some setup work. So part of the, the deal with him racing here today, he's learning what that race car is doing, and he'll be able to help Armani Williams when he races in Saskatoon. Well, Larry Jackson, a, a veteran late model ranks. Battle for third spot as we're back up towards the front of the field. And look at Dumoulin on the back bumper of the 18 of Tagliani. And Warren Jones has been doing this for so long, tells Tagliani it's clear down low, but he's going to force himself back in there because he knows L.B. Dumoulin probably not real happy about getting turned around. So he's helping his driver the best he can. You can almost see the steam coming out of the driver's side window of the WeatherTech.ca number 47 of LP Jubilee, but continues to race pace as caution flies once again with 44 laps to go. The Castrol 25 of Simone Dion Vienne around here at Autodrome Chaudière. A Castrol Best Buy number 25 getting back up to speed. That car prepared out of the Canada's best racing team stables. And he was sitting just outside of the top 10 at the time he went around. Caden Lapsovich continues out front here on TSN. Welcome back to the third race of the NASCAR Pinty Series here in 2017. We're in Autodrome Chaudière. I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me in the booth is Adam Ross as we're lining up once again for the fourth restart. The green flag is out. And once again, it's Lapsovich and LeBay on the front row. Lapsovich led at the strike, but LeBay with a great restart once again. He'll take the lead down into turn three. Look at LeBay able to drive off the outside of those corners and hang on to top spot as he gets down in front of the 76. And side by side, Donald Teague and DJ Kennington. You can almost sense the frustration. They just can't get away from each other. We should say, too, during that last caution period, the 74 of your points leader, Kevin Lacroix, received the free pass. So that puts him one lap down to the field, if, if I'm correct. Still a chance here with 36 laps to go, and you can see everybody getting very racy. Donald Teague rubs into the side of the 17 of Kennington. And look at how smooth LP's hands were going into the corner, and then you start to get on the throttle, and it's like he's dancing. Car's been decent, though. He's been flirting with the top five all race long as he chases the number 22 of Donald Tigg. Currently, the 47 is in fifth spot as we ride on board with Larry Jackson in the number eight, and Jackson having a great run well, sitting in eighth position. As we said, he's shaking the car down. He wants to give Armani Williams the best run he can get, and he wants to get the best result he can for himself. Running out of the CBRT shop is Larry Jackson. Change for the lead as the 76 of Lapsovich sneaks under the 32 Can-Am Ford Fusion of Alex LeBay once again. We've seen this strip 
before. Well, and this time it took him a few laps to get it done, and I was mistaken. Kevin Lacroix is now back on the lead lap, Dave. That is good news for your points leader, but we have problems on the racetrack for the number eight of Larry Jackson. We talked about what a good run he was having, but the race for autism, number eight off the pace. Yeah, slowly down the back straightaway he rolls. Let's have another look. Something was amiss, obviously, going down into turn one. Being the experienced driver, he got to the, the point where he was least likely to have any issues up on the outside of turn two and come to a stop. We'll review the CRS Express 300 so far. Five cautions have slowed the field so far this afternoon. Four leaders, 10 lead changes. One of those leaders, Donald Teague, for 100 laps on the day. That's so far the tops. Teague had that 22 car out front for a long time. You can hear Caden Lapsovich pumping the throttle there, getting ready to go. Green flag is out once again. 16 laps to go as they cross the stripe that time. And they're side by side through one and two. Dave. The 47 of Dumoulin up into third now, but still a race for the lead. Lapsovich down low and LeBay trying to build that momentum up in the high roof. Lapsovich a little crossways off four. Side by side, but the new dynamic this year. Here's LP Dumoulin in the mix, and he looks fast. They're leaning on each other at the front of the field. LeBay still in that outside group, able to make it work for several laps this time. But Lapsovich starts. 76. It's like a symphony out there, Dave. Doesn't that sound great? And just look at the side of that number 47. A battle for a second. LP Dumoulin showing all the wear and tear of a 300-lap battle here at Autodrome Chaudière. He has been a warrior today. You can see him slide up the racetrack to take away Alex LeBay's lane. But there ago would never have made a move like that but the 47 WeatherTech Dodge is a force to be reckoned with here today. This is a battle for a fifth spot. Donald Teague with Andrew Ranger. Kevin Lacroix, you remember, back on the lead lap of the bumper to bumper total lubricant 74. And Donald Teague has developed a terrible push coming off the corner. He can get down into the corner but watch that 22 machine shoot straight up the racetrack. Donald Teague pushed that time right into the 27 of Andrew Ranger. Well, if not for Ranger on the outside, Teague might put it right out of the ballpark. <laughs> the circuit accurate Dodge just trying to hang on and save that spot that he's in. There's Alex Tangley into the inside. Some contact in the front. This is a battle for second with LeBay on the inside. And the 47 of LP Dumoulin. Three, Three laps to go. go here at Chaudière. Now two as the leader comes across the line. This is a battle for second spot. Caden Lapsovich well out in front at this point. fly by. I believe he'll put the 27 a lap down. Well, we'll find out. Ranger drove around. Let's have a look at this. Running on the outside of T, down into turn one. Oh, Kevin Lacroix. It was time to go. There was two laps left. They have a history, and that just added to it. But Caden Lapsovich will have to fight them off for another restart. We are in two time here at Autodrome Chaudière. Adams made his way down to victory lane and we are setting up for a green white checker finish. This time it's Dumoulin on the outside of the 76 of Lapsovich. Green flag flies once again. Dumoulin sails it in on the outside. That hurt him a little bit. Lapsovich will take over top spot once again but again the WeatherTech Dotsie number 47 flies on the outside. White flag is up. One more lap to go. White flag. That was the white flag. the 76 of LeBay and the 47 of Dumoulin bang together. Dumoulin outside. Lapsovich is going to take the win. LeBay will hang on to second spot. And there is the crew celebrating Jeff Lapsovich, the crew chief,
Billy Knowles, his spotter, Robbie Thompson, Mike Lapsovich, Don Hignell, and Ken Crane. They all did their work today, and so did that young man, Caden Lapsovich, for the fourth time in victory lane. Caden Lapsovich victorious here at Autodrome Chaudier after another torrid battle with Alex LeBay. Caden Lapsovich, I'd never seen a crowd erupt like it did last year when LeBay won the race that time. This time, redemption. You outdueled Alex LeBay in a phenomenal battle. Talk about this win. Oh, this, this feels so good. Um, we were so close last year, and finally, check it off is amazing. Uh, you know, Alex and LP gave me some great battles on the restart, and you know, I could ask the race with a better group of guys. This is awesome. Kaden Lapsovich atop the podium today. <laughs> and we'll take a look at the top 10 here at Autodrome Chaudière. Alex LeBay, LP Dumoulin, your top three. Cannington, Donald Teague, a top five here today. And Kevin Lacroix salvages a top 10 finish. Andrew Ranger after that late race spin inside the top 10 as well. Alex LeBay, one year ago you stood atop the podium today. One spot shy of where you'd, you'd like to be. Talk about that race. Um, French or English there? English. If English. Yeah. That was pretty fun. I mean, kid, uh, be, be kidding by a nose last year. Now this year he beat us. We were um, we were pretty good. Just uh, I think a little too loose on traction there. We had a pretty good car. Had a good fight there at the end. So uh, it's a good second place uh, finish. I think we're got the points lead uh, leaving short here. So it's a uh, it's a good thing. And Alex LeBay will get a chance to address his fans in his native tongue, but he has taken over the points lead of the NASCAR Pinty Series, now by two over Kevin Lacroix. Lapsovich up into third. LP Dumoulin, Andrew Ranger, round at the top five. And the folks from CRS handing out the hardware. There is the podium here on the CRS Express 300. Today's race has been brought to you by... E3 spark plugs, born to burn, and by Honey Goo from Clean Flow, one honey of a loo. As they prepare to spray the champagne here on the podium, the next race will be back on the road course. The Echo Unlimited 100 from Sir Free Icar for Adam and all of the crew here at TSN. We thank you for joining us here today. We'll see you next time. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.